giving you on test number two. All right, let's get back to work. We're talking about the power of the coefficients of a balanced chemical equation If we look at the following chemical equation, it's balanced for hydrogen, for hydrogen, two oxygen, two oxygen. The coefficient is the number that's in front of the formula of a molecule or an element, a chemical symbol. And this tells you when it's balanced, there are two moles of hydrogen reacting with one mole of oxygen to make two moles of water. I'll say it again. The coefficients in front tell you molar ratios. There's two moles of hydrogen reacting when there's no numbers. Number one, one mole of oxygen gives you two moles of water. So therefore, How many moles of O2 oxygen are needed to make 7.47 moles of water? Well, what do you do? Well, first of all, figure out what units and what are you being asked to find. That's the first thing I always do, and it will help. Next thing, what are you given? And notice you're given 7.47 moles. of water. And now, what do you do? Well, this is the only number we have to start with. So I'm going to put it on the board here. If there was some magic ratio, no, it's not magic, it's chemistry, that you could multiply this number by what units would you want your answer to be? And it tells you right here. Moles of oxygen. And now, it's time to use your good buddy, your good friend. Remember, keep count. Going for the Guinness Book of World Record. Most times saying that. Hasn't gone. Has everybody done it already? Anyway. All right. Let's take a look at this. Use your good buddy, your good friend, unit analysis, whatever you're trying to get to units goes on top of this ratio. Whatever units I'm trying to get rid of, I don't want water, uh, moles of water, goes underneath. And where do you get those numbers? From the balanced chemical equation. And the balance, there's I sign in, going once, twice. Why don't you get, pass it forward, I'll leave it up here, and anybody forget to sign in. Thank you, sir. Look out, I'm learning names like I put them up to 98.5%. Pretty much got it done. And let's get back to the problem. And here, this tells you the molar ratios, which is what we have over there. One mole of oxygen makes two moles of water. One mole of oxygen makes two moles of water. Now, these are exact numbers because you can't have half a molecule. <coughs> you can't. It won't be that molecule. It's like you can't go to the car dealership and say, you know, I'd like to buy half a car from you. And I hope if I ever did that, they'll probably please and get help from me. Hopefully that will never happen. And therefore, if we look at this moles of water divided by moles of water, cancel out. I'm left with the right units. Now I'm going to go get my calculator.
I'll put in my numbers. And my calculator gives me this number. Now, on test two, I test one. We'll say, please use proper significant figures for all calculated answers. You look at this, three significant figure. These are exact numbers. They don't play a role in the determining significant figures. So this is the only thing, three. I better get up at three. Why do you round that off at three? I'll give you three seconds. Time's up. Keep the three, keep the seven, keep the three. That's my three significant figures. Is that five or greater? Well, uh, it's five. And therefore, I drop that, and every zeros afterward, increase to one in front. So the correct answer for this, if I want to make this amount of water moles, I need 3.74 moles of oxygen to react with hydrogen. And that's what the balanced chemical equation gives you a lot of power. Look at this balanced equation, two sodium, two sodium, two chlorine, two chlorine, it's balanced. new to this, go through it so you can learn it if you have any problems. At least try and find out what you're being asked to find and what you're doing. And then I told you in the past, I used to make students go to the board when we were in BIC. We had boards on the sidewalls too. I figured out they'd rather take pliers and pull their teeth out than go to the board. So I stopped doing that.
All right, looks like everybody's done. Let's do this. All right, everybody, watch closely. First thing I'm going to do is find out what am I being asked to find. And the question is how many moles of sodium chloride? Then I look here and say, what am I given to work with? This. 8.561 moles of chlorine. And I'm given the balanced chemical equation. Without this, you're lost. I know the equation, but if I don't give this, you can't do the problem. I do. So, what do we do? Well, it's the only number we have to start with, so I'm going to start with it. What answer do I want to get to? Unit-wise, moles of sodium chloride. And if there was a ratio I could use to multiply this to get to this, if I use unit analysis, I look at it and say, what am I trying to get to? Unit analysis tells me that goes on top. I can do that. Unit analysis also tells me whatever I'm trying to get rid of, I don't want that in my final answer. I divide that because anything divided by itself becomes the number one and cancels out. And now I have to ask the question, where do I get those numbers? I get those numbers, so molar ratio, moles per moles, from the balanced chemical equation. And this tells me two moles of sodium, but I don't need that. React with one mole of chlorine, well I do need that, do need that. and then how many moles of sodium chloride does it make? Two. And now before I pick up my calculator, moles of chlorine divided by moles of chlorine become the number one. So it cancels out. I'm left with moles of sodium chloride. And now I can go to my calculator, which I will. Come up here. And this is the number my calculator gives me. Now, on test two, like one, it will say, please use proper significant figures for all calculated answers. And the, this is a multiplication division. You get the same number of significant figures in your answer as the number that has the lowest significant figure. Well, this is four, but these are exact numbers. They don't play a role, so my answer should have four significant. How do I round this off to four? Keep the one, keep the seven, keep the one, keep the two. I've had my four. This is the one to round off. Is that four or less? So I drop it, and the correct answer here would be 17.12 moles. Let's go through again. What did I do to get there? First of all, I read the problem and determined what am I being asked to find? How many moles of sodium chloride? I look at what am I given? Only this. Now I say this is the only thing I have to start with. I want to get to these units because I figured that out. And now I'll use unit analysis. Whatever units I'm trying to get to go on top. It always works. And it's always been my friend. And whatever you're trying to get rid of unit-wise go here. Where do we get these two numbers? We come over here. Look at the balanced chemical equation. Two moles of sodium react with one mole of chlorine to make two moles of sodium chloride and do the math. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never found a balance that weighs moles. All the balances I've ever seen, both in a laboratory and a chemical plant, weighs in things like grams kilograms or pounds. In this class, we'll stay away from kilograms and pounds. I work with those numbers a lot in the United States and Europe. But we'll stick with grams. And let's look at a real life problem.
And let's look at the following problem, 10 points. You'll see why it's 10 points in a second, because it's a lot of work. But anyways, but you can do it. You're given a balanced chemical equation. The question is, if I react 68.7 grams of oxygen with an excess of hydrogen, that means you've got all the hydrogen world react with anything hydrogen react with, how many grams of water will I form? Well, what are we being asked to find? Grams of water. What are we given? 68.7 grams of oxygen. Now, I'm going to write something on the board. Don't write it down. Trust me, I'm the chemist here. Does that work? So if I use the analysis, I would start and say, I'll do this. Again, what I'm doing now, don't write down. You'll see why. In a second, here's what I have. I'm trying to get the grams of water. And if I use the unit analysis, can do this in one step. I put grams of water here. I put grams of oxygen here. And now I'm stuck. Why? Because I don't know those numbers. There's nothing here that will give me those numbers. So what do I do? Well, you do the following. In order to do mass calculation for reactions, you need to do three steps. If we look at this problem, we're looking at a relationship between water and oxygen. The only relationship I know between those two is a molar one. One mole of oxygen.
makes two moles of water. Well, I don't have moles of either of these. I don't have moles of oxygen. Well, the first step we have to do is whatever we're given the weight of, A, compound A, in this case, oxygen, we have to convert to moles. And I've already taught you that, but we'll do it again. And then what we just covered, when now we have moles of A using the balanced chemical equation, we can convert to moles of B, in this case water, and once we get moles of something, we can convert it into grams, which we'll practice on Friday. So let's get to work. And now you see why I said, don't copy this down, because now we're going to do the problem. All right, step one. Whatever we're given a weight of, we have to convert it to moles. So how do we do that? Well, now I can say I have 68.7 grams of oxygen. And yes, you can start copying this down. This, oh, by the way, everybody's attention. On test two, important information, what's on this slide, I will give to you. Anyways, let's get to work. I'm trying to go from grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen. And here, what do we have? I'm going to put moles of oxygen on top. What do I want to get rid of? Because I'm using unit analysis. Grams of oxygen. And you know, and this will be provided on important information. Sorry about the small font, but the screen's in the way. One mole of a compound equals its molecular weight in grams. And the molecular weight, you guys see this OK, Bob? You see it OK? How can you see it? It's testing. And by the way, I know your name, so I'll be using them. But anyways, you should know, and this will be, when I say you should know how to use this, this will also be given to you important information. And one mole of a compound equals its molecular weight. Well, if I have one mole, I need the molecular weight of oxygen. How do we determine that? Oxygen to three significant, has two oxygens, O2. And the atomic weight of oxygen to three significant figures is 16.0 equal 32.0 grams. So I know I can put that in there. And now grams of oxygen divided by grams of oxygen cancel out. Anything divided by itself becomes the number one. And now I'll be left with the answer I want at this step. And now I'll go to my calculator. My calculator gives me this number. Now, listen up. There are two thoughts on how do you round off when you're doing multiple calculations. And they're all multiplication division. One school is you wait for the very end, check all your numbers, and round off there. Another school is you round off at each step. Now, I'm of the school round off at each step, and it works. How do I know? Because I've done these calculations where I'm dealing with about $200,000 in chemicals. And you don't want to make a mistake because you get fired immediately if you blow to close to a quarter million dollars in chemicals by making a math there. But I'm not going to force you to round off my way. So on a test, anytime I have a problem that has multiple steps, I will calculate both ways and both answers will be the same. But I'm the round off person. So three, three, round that off to three, 2.15 moles of 
And when I do the key at home in a spreadsheet, I do the following. Where I'll keep, forget about the zeros at the end, I'll keep the number going. Now, are we done? No. We're trying to get to grams of water. So now we have to do step two. board space, but we don't in this room, but I think everybody can make out what I'm doing. So, what do we have? We want to go from moles of whatever we just can determine, in this case I have on the slide A, A here is oxygen, to moles of what we're trying to get our answer for, B. In this case, that's water. Well, I have moles, 2.15 moles of oxygen, I want to get to now moles of water. And what do I do? I use my good buddy, my good friend, do an analysis, and I say whatever I'm trying to get to, and we just did two problems like this, I'll put on top whatever I'm trying to get rid of, I'll put down here. And now, where do I get those numbers? I come over here to my balanced chemical equation, because this gives me molar ratios. And notice this is a ratio of moles of one thing to another. Whenever you have a molar ratio, you're looking for numbers, you'll get that from your balanced chemical equation. And I look over here, and I say, sure enough, one mole of oxygen, remember the coefficients are moles, makes two moles of water. One mole of oxygen makes two moles of water. And now I'll go, before I take my calculator and check, do my units cancel out? Moles of oxygen divided by moles of oxygen becomes the number one. I'm left with moles of water where I'm trying to get to. And looks good so far. So I'll come here. And if you'll notice that I'll take the moles of oxygen and multiply it times two. I'll do for both rounding off at each step and waiting until the end. And now if I'm doing my rounding off, I have 4.30 moles of oxygen. Am I dumb? No. And this is where having this on the paper helps you. I need to go to grams of oxygen. So what do I do? I now go to step three. Whatever you just calculated the moles of, B, in this case, water, you convert it to grams. And we've gone through that. And let's do it again. I have 4.30 moles of water. What do I want to get to? Grams of water, because the last step is moles to grams, whatever you're trying to get. And once again, what will I use? Unit analysis, whatever I'm trying to get to, I will put on top, so I have to write so low, but limited board space. I don't think the school wants me writing on the walls, but I'll have a board there. And whatever I'm trying to get rid of goes underneath. And where do I get those numbers? Right over here, and this will be on important information. One mole of a compound equals its molecular weight in grams. The molecular weight is the sum of all atomic weights. So now we have to figure out the atomic weight for water. Water, H2O, has two hydrogens, one oxygen, to three significant figures. Hydrogen is 101, to three significant figures. Oxygen is 16.0. This is 202, 
16.0, added up 18.02. Remember, when you're doing an addition, you get the same number of significant figures in your answer as the number you're adding that has the fewest significant figures past the decimal. I'll say it again. When you add, you have the same number of significant figures past the decimal to the right in your answer that has the same number as the lowest number of significant figures that you add. If you notice past the decimal, top is 2, bottom is 1. How do you round this off to 1? Keep the 0. This is less than 4. So the answer is 1 mole equals its molecular weight, 18.0. And now I'll see, do my units cancel out? I'll use unit analysis again. Moles of water divided by moles of water equals the number of water. I'm left with grams of water. I'm on the right track. And now I'll go to my calculator. And if you notice, we get different answers. If you look at this and you round off at it the end, what's the lowest significant figure here? Three. So my answer should be three. If I do this one, it would be I get 77.3 grams. If I look at where I round off at each step, I get 77.4 grams. Which is the right answer? On my test, they both are. In real life, I go with this one, but on my test, I'm not going to force you to do it the way I do. And let's go through what we have to do to get to the answer again. <coughs> All right, the problem, 10 points. You're given this, and you're asked if you react 68.7 grams of oxygen with an excess of hydrogen, how many grams of water will you produce, or I produce? And so we're given this. This is what we have to find. This is what we're given. There's no direct relationship between these two. But we're also given this. And because of that, for this type of problem, you have to do three steps. Whatever I'm given in grams, I have to convert to moles. Why? Because the only relationship I have between water and oxygen for this problem is the balanced chemical equation, which tells me one mole of oxygen makes two moles of water. So first, I have to convert into grams. A mole. Here's the grams, here's the moles. I use unit analysis to get this ratio. Whatever I'm trying to get to goes on top, whatever I'm getting rid of goes underneath. Where do we get these numbers? One mole of a compound equals the molecular weight of the compound. And the molecular weight is the sum of all atomic weights. And oxygen, there are two gas, there's two oxygen atoms, the atomic mass for each oxygen add them to three significant figures is 16.0. Get 32, put the number in, you now have moles. Well, we need to go to grams, so we have to do now step two. What we just calculated the moles for oxygen, we have to convert to the moles of our answer we're trying to get to, water. And now, there's moles of oxygen, I want to go to moles of water. Unit analysis tells me whatever I'm trying to get to goes on top. Whatever I'm trying to get rid of goes here. Where do I get those numbers? From the balanced chemical equation, this tells me two moles of hydrogen. I don't need that for this problem. Make wrap with one mole of oxygen, I do, to make two moles of water. These are exact numbers, don't play a role in significant figures. I do the math, and I now have moles of water. But am I done? No. 
I'm trying to get their grams of water. How do I do that? Here's my moles of water. I try and get the grams of water. I use unit analysis again. Whatever I'm trying to get to goes on top. Whatever I'm trying to get rid of goes down there. Where do I get these numbers? Again, one mole of a compound equals its molecular weight in grams. And the molecular weight is the sum of all atomic weights. And therefore, what's the molecular weight of water? H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen, two times the atomic weight of hydrogen, the three significant figures, 202, one times 16, the atomic weight of oxygen, the three significant figures, 16.0, add it up, these proper significant figures, put the numbers in, and that's how you have it. Now, when I worked in industry, and I still do that sometimes for consulting, because some people are afraid to do this, because the the pressure of all the money I'm involved, I did calculations to make things like fabric softeners or resins, which is a fancy name for glues, to hold sand together to make the molds for car engines. And if you're dealing with like 180, 200,000 pounds of chemicals at a dollar pound, you're talking a lot of money. And whenever I did this, I, you'd do it for each reactant to make a certain amount of product, I would do the calculations early enough, let it sit for a day, then the third day I'd come back and do it fresh, check my answers, and they better be the same or I'd do it again. And it always was the same because I took my time. With that kind of money, you take your time. But let's do another one. Again, still 10 points. And while you're popping that down, I'm going to raise this to bring it to the boardroom. Now, I would ask you first to do on your own, I'm going to make you work a little this morning, what are you being asked to find and what are you given? Write that down somewhere. I'm only asking you to do what are you being asked to find, what are you given? We're going to do this stepwise, like Winky Ding. Oh, you people don't know who Winky Ding are. If you have a chance, go to YouTube and look up Winky Ding. I won't give it away who Winky Ding is. All right, let's take a look at this. How many grams of chlorine? That's what we're being asked to find. What are we given? We're given this. 127.6 grams of sodium chloride, but we're also given the balanced chemical equation. Now, there's no relationship between weight of this and weight of this on this board or anywhere directly. Therefore, you have to use three steps. Why don't you try to figure out what step number one is? Step number one, we're going to do this one step at a time. Anybody familiar with the three stages? Step by step. 
inch by inch, slowly I, never mind, how slowly I turned step by step, inch by inch. I actually saw them live, but they had the last of the three stooges who was, I forgot, it was after Shem. I was a kid, they used to come around to local movie theaters. Even then they were good in person. I always marveled how none of my friends or myself lost an eye because of the Three Stooges. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't know the Three Stooges. Again, you're only doing step one. Don't raise the head yet. give you those are the atomic weights of sodium chlorine let's find out if Dr. White's right If we look at sodium, the number underneath the name or chemical symbol, 29.990, the three significant figures, is, I got it wrong, I looked it up, 23.0, and if we go to chlorine, did I get that right? And the answer is yes, 35.45, the three significant figures, is 35.5. All right. Let's go ahead and do step one. Well, I'll give you another 18.7 seconds. Go. All right, let's do this. How do we proceed? If we look at the advice, step one, whatever we're given in weight, sodium chloride, I am now going to convert to moles. So what we'll do is grams sodium chloride to moles sodium chloride. And I have 127.6 grams sodium chloride. I want to get to the moles of sodium chloride. I'll use unit analysis. Whatever I'm trying to get to goes on top. Whatever units I'm trying to get rid of goes underneath. And I erase, but I'll put it up on the board again. Your compound. One mole of a compound equals its molecular weight in grams. And the molecular weight in grams is the sum of all atomic weights, so I need to calculate the molecular weight of sodium chloride because one mole equals the molecular weight. I have one sodium. One chlorine, 23.0, 35.5, 58 point 58.5. Notice one pass the decimal, one pass my answer has. So this would be 58.5 grams. Before I pick up my calculator, grams of sodium chloride divided by grams of sodium chloride cancel out. I'm left with moles, and now I'll pick up my calculator.
and my calculator gives me this number. And if I look here, I have four significant figures. The one is exact number. This is three significant figures. And therefore, I should round that off to three significant figures. If you do it stepwise, which I do, but you can do it both ways, which I'll show you the answer in set when we get to it. And now we're ready for step B. And why don't you try setting up step B? Except for step two. Which is moles of A, which in this case sodium chloride, and you want to convert from moles of, what are we trying to get to? Chlorine. Question. Remember, it hasn't changed. All questions are good questions in my class. Yes, class. Wouldn't it be too many? Yeah, I talk louder because unfortunately, since we last met, I haven't had a miracle. My hearing is so awful. Wouldn't it be two times the molecular weight of chlorine since there's two chlorine? No, we're doing sodium chloride. Um, okay, and that's right. a good question. Oh. Now you know. So the answer is one chlorine, one sodium. But aren't you glad you asked? Because now you know. In case you on a test, you won't make that mistake, which is a good thing. trying to find. Step two. Step two is whatever we just have found, moles of A, in this case A is sodium chloride, we want to go to moles of our answer. And the answer we're trying to get is grams of chlorine, but in this step, step two, we want to get the moles of chlorine. Because the only relationship I know between sodium chloride and chlorine is a molar ratio from the balanced chemical equation. So I have 2.18 from step one, moles, sodium chloride. I want to get to moles of chlorine. I'm going to use unit analysis. Whatever I'm trying to get to goes on top. Whatever I'm trying to get rid of goes underneath. This would cancel each other out, and anything divided by itself becomes the number one. And now, where do we get these numbers? From the balanced chemical equation. Two moles of sodium, well, I don't need that there. But I do need one mole of chlorine, no number, it's the number one, if you don't see one, makes two moles of sodium chloride. So for every one mole of chlorine, I make two moles of sodium chloride. And now, since I already figured out this can slot I'm left with the right units, I can go to my calculator. And 
understand if I do the math, three significant figures, exact numbers, three significant figures, I'm there. Am I done? The answer is no, because I don't want to get the moles of chlorine. I want to get to grams right here of chlorine. And now it's time to do step three, which I'll let you try first. Everybody looks at the clock. It's changed. For those who came in late for lab on Friday, we're only doing investigation seven. I'm required to put down six and seven in my syllabus. Six is not worth doing. And plus, most of it is instructor demo and a number of things. They don't even put the chemicals out for six parts of them. So we're just going to do seven. But that will give us time to go through. Make sure you do the practice problems for Friday for this part one mole calculation of chapter five and do the balanced chemical equations part for chapter five. We'll go through that in lab. That means Monday, besides the review, I'll go through the problem set on these types of mole mole calculations. All right, let's go ahead and do this. I think everybody's done. And step three, whatever we've now calculated the moles of, in this case, moles <coughs> of chlorine, we want to go to what? Grams of chlorine, because that's what our final answer is. I'll write it over here so it's not at the bottom of the board. And so I have 1.09 moles of chlorine. What do I want to get to? I want to get to grams of chlorine. I'll use the analysis, whatever I'm trying to get to goes on top. Whatever I'm trying to get rid of goes here. And remember, one mole of any compound equals its molecular weight, which I need here. The molecular weight is the sum of all atomic weights. And how do we do that? Chlorine has gas has two chlorines. And each one is 35.5. And you get, if I did the math correctly, 71.0, which goes in here. This cancels out. I'm left with that. At this step, three significant, three exact number. My no answer should be three. If I look over here at the each step round off, one, two, three, keep that, round off, the number is nine, that's five or higher. Drop that, that becomes a four. So I would get 77.4 grams. If I look at this number where I waited till the end, 
You look at everything, the answer should have three significant figures. And therefore, how do I round this off to three significant figures? Keep the seven, keep the seven, keep the four. Is this four or less? Yes. So the answer is the same thing. This is one of those cases where rounding off either way gives the same answer. And that's how you do it. Any questions? How many would like me to do one more? Well, all right, we'll do it in class. Our lab will, or next week to practice problems because obviously <coughs> nobody else did. So let's move on. All right, have everybody's attention. Click. All right, this turn to switch off. Will this be on a test or a final? To off. What's in your books? So I'll cover it briefly. Now, there's something called percent of e mass of each element. And this turns out to be an important way of proving the identity of a compound, especially new compounds. And it's calculated by determining the mass of each element in a compound, the total mass of the compound, and then multiplying by 100 or 100 percent. And for my PhD thesis, I had about 145 new compounds. And each one, I had to do the percent mass because they were organic. And organic, you typically do CH and N, that's carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. And when you send it out, you send this out to the lab, and they send you the numbers back, and you check your formula against their numbers. Their numbers are always right. You have a reputable lab, which we use. Uh, but first, you have to have an ultra-pure sample. And so to get 154 ultra-pure samples, that's a lot of work. And then do the calculations. I didn't do it all in one week. This was over about a year and a half period. When I made something new, I sent it out to confirm it. But percent mass is an important thing. Have you ever seen on CSI programs, they say, well, here's the analysis of what the evidence is, that chemical we found at the crime scene. Usually they're doing one of the things they do is percent mass of key elements, and that helps identify things. And I'm done with this chapter. So give me a second. Chapter 4 and Chapter 5, Part 1. And let's see what Chapter 5, Part 2, I think I'll do later. Let's This will be on test three, since I finished everything for test one. And if you haven't noticed, and I will do this the whole semester, and partly because of my golden rule of teaching, I don't like done to me what we're, I don't do to my students that was done to me, and I didn't like. And therefore, I always finish up at least a week in advance material that will be on the test, so you have plenty of time to study, which means you'll do good on the test. All right, everybody, fire up. New chapter, new stuff. We talked about atoms. We talked about molecules. We looked at them very closely. Let's look at a bigger picture concerning atoms and molecules. And let's talk about gases. When we talk about gases, there's a kinetic theory of gases. Everybody, 
click switches off for this, but I still like to go through it. This is good to understand when you think about gases. By the way, if you haven't figured it out, right now you're sitting in a gas, actually a collection of gases. We call that air, and it's keeping us alive, which is also a good thing. But anyways, when we talk about gases, gases consist of small particles, either atoms or molecules. Right now in this room mainly is nitrogen and oxygen atom molecules, N2 and O2. And they're moving around real fast. They're bouncing into you real fast. How come you don't feel it? Because all your life from the minute you were born, it was there and you've learned to ignore it. Now, where can you feel those molecules hitting you very hard? When you step outside and you feel the wind, that's molecules, a lot of them, hitting you very hard. But you never thought the wind is chemistry. It is. Because those are molecules bouncing into you very quickly. Now, when we talk about these particles or molecules, there are no real attractive forces bringing them together. They're sort of like alone, just wandering around in space like this room. And the actual volume of a gas is extremely small. What we mean by that is the amount of space taken up by the molecules in the gas is small compared to the space it takes up. If I were to take all the gas in this room, nitrogen, oxygen, I could compress it into very small space. Why? Because most of this, like I just touched, is empty space. But you know you can touch empty space. Right? That's all for show. Might mean never use that one again. And the average kinetic energy, how fast the molecule is moving, is proportional to its Kelvin temperature. The higher the Kelvin temperature, the more energy a molecule or a gas has. And gas molecules are always moving. And generally, they go in a straight path unless they fly with something like billiard balls. And that's the kinetic theory of gases, which I won't ask on a test. But if somebody comes up to you and taps you on the shoulder and asks you something about it, you've least heard it once. I doubt that will happen. All right. Switch it on. When we talk about gases, there are key properties we measure. One is the important thing, pressure. It's probably the most important, which is why I have it first. You can measure volume, how much there is, and temperature, what temperature is the gas right now, whatever this room temperature is. Let's say it's 72 Fahrenheit. That's the temperature of gas in there. And how much do you have? And usually you have a weight, but you convert that to moles. So you have pressure, volume, temperature, and amount. Those are all important aspects of gas. Switch is off for this slide in terms of the formula. When we talk about gases, one of the most important things is pressure. And pressure, by definition of anything, a gas, is force per unit area. I'll never ask you that, but we have gauges that measure. Again, you don't have to count right down this slide. Next one you will. But anyway, it's not, well, actually, I'll be giving you important information, but still. Pressures are important. How many of you have ever, either yourself or seen someone with modern cars now, most of a lot of them have gauges and tires themselves, check the pressure of your car tires? You don't think about it, but the car tires are inflated with gas. And that gas is air or the rip off. This is my own personal opinion. You know how you get a car where the tires are filled at the dealership with nitrogen? And two, they say it's better for you. It's not. Uh, the rationale behind that, I won't go into why that's wrong, 
But if you ever go to a place like a gas station where they have, and it's hard to find nowadays, free air, you don't know, have to put money in the machine, the first thing you should always do is put your finger on the part that will go on your tires, let some air flow, because that will get any moisture that's in the line out of there. I always do that. But then, I'm a chemist who's worked with gases at very high pressures. Now, when we talk about gas pressures, how do you measure that? One way is with a device called a barometer. And a barometer is a device to measure atmosphere pressure, which is quite important. And <coughs> let's see if I can find the old style one. style barometers, not like the ones you use today, were a column of mercury with a little dish at the bottom. And here's a, a picture of it right here. And if you look up here, here's the one you used to see in every lab, including here. And what you have in here is, and I won't ask this on a test, but you have some mercury down here, a column, and you can measure how high up the mercury is pushed by the pressure of the atmosphere. And this is the old style barometer. Unfortunately, if you don't know, mercury is quite dangerous chemical, and we no longer use these, other than I have seen a couple of demonstration models. There's still one that another school. No, they got rid of that one too. But most barometers are devices like this or digital. You have, I have in my house a couple of digital barometers. And they give you pressure. And what units do we measure pressure? In the lab, we measure in millimeters of mercury. Why millimeters of mercury? great Italian scientist, Torricelli, came up with the barometer, I believe. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. And it's time to find why Dr. White will never go to art school. And that is, let me read you that. If you have, and you can laugh, you can laugh hard. Like I said, I'll never go to art school. My mother was a very good uh, amateur artist. I didn't inherit any of those genes for art. But anyways, my father was a pharmacist. Science genes I did not hear. When the air presses down on this bowl of mercury, and mercury is a liquid at room temperature and lower or higher temperatures, it pushes this up and evacuated too to a certain height. And if you measure the height from where the level of mercury is in the dish to how far up it goes in the tube, you'll get a measurement. And we call that millimeters of mercury. And that's the measure. And because this work was done by Tor, Torricelli, we also use the term Tor. One Tor equals one millimeter of mercury. I will give you this information on important information test three. Because as I've told you, but you do have to know how to use this. Now, at sea level, by definition, one atmosphere equals 760 millimeters of mercury when there's no storm going by. At since one, and I'll put it on the board, and when I have this in an old slide where it says know this, I should change know how to use this, because I'll give you this on test three also, and that is one atmosphere, 
which is by definition at sea level, the pressure is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury and is equal to 760 torr. And that's a definition. Because this is a definition, all these numbers are exact numbers. And therefore, we have the following that you should know, and the pressure is very important when we talk about gases. We have one atmosphere equals 760 millimeters of mercury equals 760 torr. is 760 torr. What are we being asked to find? Atmospheres. Remember, this is test three material. What are we given? This. Therefore, I'm going to use unit analysis. It works in this chapter, too. And I only have this number. What units am I trying to get to? Atmospheres. I'll use my good buddy, my good friend, I'm saying going for the Guinness, Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, my good buddy, my good friend, unit analysis. Whatever units I'm trying to get to go on top. Whatever units I'm trying to get rid of go underneath. Where do I get this number? Oh, look, someone's nice enough to write on the board. One atmosphere equals 760 torr. These are both exact numbers. And if I look at that, my units cancel out. Torr divided by torr is 1. I get up my right units. I come over to my calculator. We don't want to let you get out late, so I'll hurry up. And this is what my calculator gives me. This is three significant figures, exact, exact. Round that off to three significant figures. And I get 751, 0.751 atmosphere. And with that, I'm done. I'll see you on Friday. Don't forget to bring your safety goggles. You'll need them. Your proper clothing. No shorts, no flip-flops, no uh, leggings or pants with... Vent holes. And I'll see you. Remember, we're only doing investigation seven.